All right, we are live. One of the most lauded and celebrated sculptors, Dhruva Mistri, is uh, known for his sculptures ranging from small scale domestic pieces to large public works across genres in a bid to explore cultural tensions. Dhruva has various solo exhibitions to his name in and out of India. He was elected as a member of Royal Academy of Arts in London and was awarded the Honor CBE by the Queen in 2021. We welcome Sir to start of 2022. Good evening, Sir. Good evening. Thank you. How you were introduced to art and what forms of art were you attracted to the most? In 1960, my family moved to a village from a city, uh, hoping for a better life uh, and quieter life. Uh, whatever I saw there was uh, a kind of uh, semi-rural life where development as well as agrarian activities went together. And uh, uh, I uh, played with things which were easily available, whether it be uh, thorns, twigs, or leaves, or fruits, and all. And um, also worked with things like um, a pound of bits, bits of paper, scissors, glue, and um, try to uh, play with whatever I could uh, lay my hands on. And um, the, I liked my school very much, where uh, I also had seen few teachers working with uh, paints and brushes and uh, trying, uh, what to say, uh, decorating classrooms, making, uh, 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 and also writing uh, proverbs and things like that to uh, inspire students and all. Uh, in my family, I mean, uh, uh, I had seen my elder brother, eldest brother uh, use paint and brush. And uh, I like the idea of drawing and painting very much. Uh, I liked uh, the school garden, seeing plants and flowers. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, I, had a, I had an advantage uh, by being the youngest in the family that I could get away with um, um, uh, play even though Others didn't like it so much, but uh, I could draw and paint as much as I could. Um, one pound bits of paper and all that. You know. And uh, I tried, uh, I liked uh, the, the motor cars, but the automobile vehicles were, were, were in, uh, what you said, were not that popular then, or there were, there were not that many. Uh, to see a tractor or a motor car was very interesting. And, and the kids used to rush, rush to look at them. And uh, I like the idea of something la, like uh, a little room with people in it could move and, you know, and it was most intriguing things, um, among, among most intriguing things. And I tried to understand their form and structure and tried to make, make little motor cars and tractors and, uh, even a crane and all that. So I also saw my mother uh, work with paper mesh and clay and uh, repairing uh, household implements. Uh, and we played uh, with a few other friends uh, uh, with the cactus leaves and things like that. So that was the early part of all that I could do until I went to high school. Sir, uh, not everyone is as receptive as you are to art and that was really nice hearing how you got introduced to art and which art you know, attracted you, etc. So my next question to you is, what was your career trajectory like and what is your source of motivation to make sculptures and, you know, 
different art forms. My um, um, path of pursuing uh, art hasn't been uh, easy or um, uh, so straightforward, despite my single-minded commitment to it. Uh, and uh, uh, the main problem with, with art was, in my, even in my childhood, or even today, perhaps for any beginner, uh, is uh, that it, it offers neither hope nor solace, you know, when there is no uh, uh, guaranteed uh, regular income out of it. You know. So your video camera went off. Um, there is some award call coming in. Yes, sure. What? Yes, I may have. Okay. Um, uh, I'm sorry, there's some call coming in. It's completely fine, sir. Huh? Sir, it's completely fine. Not an issue. We can resume when the call is. How can I stop this call? Uh, sir, if you decline it, then maybe it will, uh, you know, like the window will get removed. Otherwise, if you can take it and, you know, like, so we can wait, not an issue. Um, this person would probably might quit calling now in the so anyway. So the, in in my childhood, the, the, there were uh, there were difficulties of all kinds. Where uh, 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 I remember uh, the days of, of Chinese invasion, then Indo-Pak wars and also scarcity of ration. Uh, sometimes my father liked the idea that uh, I could follow art, you know, performing the youngest in the family, and that was okay, you know, but others had to work, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, idea, of, uh, idea of sustenance, you know, bothered almost everyone. Art was okay only if it could secure regular income, but, uh, 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 that was uh, not sure unless one, one actually either became a commercial artist or, uh, or took up a job as a teacher. You know. And I'm not sure if uh, either my dad, art teacher, or anyone else I knew, knew anything much about art as such, you know, or thought that it was actually a worthwhile vocation because uh, in my family or community, uh, um, I haven't uh, met anyone uh, when I was young, you know, who actually was interested in art or pursued art as a career. You know, um, but all these things actually, in a weird, weird way, made me much more interested in it because it was something nobody knew much about, and I wanted to see what is so wrong with it or what is so right with it that interests me. You know, so my interest in <coughs> making three dimensional objects uh, was a was a rather uh, plain or simple way of expressing my ideas about the world by creating objects of a kind of fancy desire imagination or uh, something that say uh, could could say something about myself or and in, in turn, something about the world that I live in in my mind. You know. So it was difficult, but uh, uh, easy uh, with few people who actually were good and supportive. Uh, so they were sympathetic and it was great to actually meet uh, teachers who were actually 
genuinely uh, helpful to me. And they liked my sincerity. They also liked my desire to learn uh, and work all the time. And um, that is how uh, by all the time, I mean, every time by knowing that I might not succeed at all and how to survive became one of the biggest gambles. And uh, it is almost like a, uh, um, uh, was almost trying to, trying to keep a flame of my own interest alive through a kind of obstacle race, you know, while learning, studying, creating, uh, surviving, and being supported, you know, by few friends, you know. And um, uh, uh, regardless of the difficulties of finance and even health at times uh, due to malnutrition, uh, I was interested in, in qualitative inference of people. Uh, that how to improve myself, how to make make my work better, how to learn things that should I uh, that I should learn rather than you know it's okay you know, nothing was just okay for me everything had had to be had to become part of my reflection and and, and my need you know so that is how uh, the work went on from one thing to another. Uh, after BA, I knew nothing uh, what will happen. After MA, I knew nothing. Uh, lucky enough, after BA, I could join MA. Uh, after MA, lucky enough, I could get uh, uh, a British Council scholarship for, uh, for a year, which was extended to one more year. And then uh, uh, due to uh, uh, what you say, institutional as well as public interest, uh, I was supported by the Arts Council. Uh, the British Council, and uh, uh, they thought that I should st stay and work there. So I worked there for 16 years. Uh, uh, although I had gone there for one year. So it was interesting. And um, I have uh, remained um, I, I never applied for any job anywhere there uh, when I was abroad. Um, and uh, a job is not something that has interested me as much as uh, me following my own work. You know. Absolutely, sir. Sir, uh, it was really inspiring to hear your story. And with that, I had a small follow up. Since you said you have seen art and different art forms since you grew up in the Indo Pak times and during those times when art was perceived entirely different by our, uh, you know, by the generation at that time. So how do you think has art grown from then to now? And what differences have you seen in the art forms and in different forms of art that you perceive today? Um, well, since, since my childhood? Or... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, uh, uh, uh... One can't just uh, well. Usually, I mean, if if I if I if I sort of see differences, then obviously the differences would only reflect what I think about it. But then it's not what I think about is not what is happening, um, uh, and uh, things uh, evolve uh, on the basis of collective needs of people, and uh, things change all the time. For good or bad is another matter, but. Uh, thing uh, uh, in terms of artistic activities, things keep evolving all the time. Uh, we don't know uh, what they mean, but the thing is, so far there are people uh, 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 interested to pursue pursue what in uh, what they can do in terms of their visual acumen and ability. Uh, and then, and then there are uh, uh, there is governmental or private support or even individual desire. Things things keep keep evolving. I think um, uh, um, a great deal of things uh, have happened and are happening, and they will happen uh, because there there is so much of talent in India you know, and lots of young people. Yes, sir. Absolutely. If you see the differences, then you know a lot would come out into light. But like you said, it's depending on our perspective. 
Yes, sir. So, like you mentioned, you went through a lot of hardship. There were a lot of ups and downs in your career, but in the end, you are where you are because of your perseverance and grit. So, I just want to take one point in time out of your trajectory. That is your first solicitation. So, what was it like? And challenge did you face? Hello. Sir, I think Apshita is having a few network issues. So I think uh, I, uh, I think uh, 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 her, her voice gets cut. You know. Yes. Sir. Uh, yeah. Am I audible now? Yeah, you are audible. Audible now. Yes. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. So, uh, as I was mentioning that you have gone through a lot of hardships and ups and downs in your life, in your throughout your career, but in the end, you are where you are because of your perseverance and grit. And uh, in the end, that is all worth. Uh, so throughout trajectory, I just want to take one point in time, your first solo exhibition. And I want to ask, uh, what was it like? What was the entire experience like doing an entire solo exhibition by yourself? And what sort of problems did you face, both personal and logistical? Hmm. Uh, while uh, uh, I was in my final year BA, uh, uh, I had a, a friend, uh, uh, a sculptor friend, uh, uh, Ravinder Reddy. We shared a room uh, in the hostel and uh, we worked together, uh, hoping that uh, we will also have, uh, instead of a joint group show, uh, we, will have a, we will have separate, uh, we work towards, towards separate solo shows, but simultaneously together, you know, uh, so that we could support one another, we could get help of one another. That was the idea. So, uh, in my uh, master's, after, uh, when I had a reasonable kind of work to show, uh, I, when I went to Delhi uh, for some interview of, of a, for a scholarship, I met uh, uh, Mr. Abraham Alkazi from uh, the uh, uh, Art Heritage, and uh, uh, he kindly uh, uh, agreed to uh, look at my things and uh, work and uh, um, I told him that what my friend and I had been thinking of doing and he was kind enough to organize and offer shows to both of us, although he hadn't seen my friend's work. And uh, not just that, he also agreed and organized to take the show from Delhi to Bombay, to Jahangir Art Gallery, which was uh, 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 in itself quite uh, a good start for us. But then um, uh, um, in those days, uh, sales were not so important because that's not, uh, my, my work especially was not uh, the kind of work which, which, which was so, which was enticing enough for people to buy as such because I had made uh, uh, some male nudes, you know, and it, it was not easy to sell male, male nudes when um, uh, we have traditions of um, seeing naked, naked, nakedness in, in female figures and all. So, uh, good thing about the show was uh, that uh, 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 any aspiring artist expected established uh, practitioners to come and uh, uh, comment and uh, encourage them, and that was quite quite interesting. But then uh, by the time uh, uh, the exhibition in Delhi and Bombay was there, I, I had already left for uh, London and I wasn't here at all. So I missed, missed meeting, meeting all people which I should have or I could have met. And uh, uh, strange enough, uh, 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 I only could uh, uh, perceive things from uh, my friends and my family's account of um, the exhibition and uh, some meager reviews that we had got. Uh, uh, the money that we, I had put in um, to make my work, it took me two, three years. By 83 or 84, I returned the money I had borrowed from my teacher here. You know. So after the one, one show in 1981. So it took me 
took me that sort of time. It was, that was the kind of uh, beginning, or that was the idea of a first solo show. Since then, um, uh, there have been uh, uh, exhibitions almost every two years. And, uh, and that too, actually, I, I always see, see exhibition as an opportunity to try and uh, do what I want to do rather than try and cater or uh, offer to people what they like. I, I actually go for what I like rather than what public might like. You know? So, and, and that's, that makes it difficult for um, uh, uh, particularly sculptors to uh, uh, become popular that way. You know? Definitely, sir. So, but I feel uh, once artists start making what they feel is better for the society, they actually elevate the uh, overall standard of art of the society. If you start catering to the audience, you are just diluting with the standard. So, by you, by doing what you like, you're actually helping the uh, you know, perception of art in the society elevate by leaps and bounds. And I think that's great. Absolutely, so even I feel the same. So, uh, sir, as a part of what you said, that you know you have had exhibitions after that in every two years, and you know you have been working on different projects. Sir, out of all the projects and designs that you have worked on, which one do you think was the most challenging, and you got to learn a lot, or you got to take back a lot from that particular design or project or that experience? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, for uh, in terms of my work, uh, all all forms are of equal interest to me, because uh, anything uh, that I have thought about that how could I say make it work on a scale and quality that it could become uh, say independent can stand on its own and. Uh, uh, and, and, and it can be kept in the open air and it can withstand uh, uh, forces of nature, gravity, earth, people, prejudices, as well as pests, you know. And uh, 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 what we know in terms of sculpture of quality, they have always sort of uh, 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 survived through all kinds of things, you know, uh, in terms of uh, fighting the elements uh, of earth and our climate, and then uh, people uh, and uh, the way the, and the reactions to art. You know. uh, my, uh, uh, the largest of the project which, uh, which I did was in 1991 to 93. Uh, and I worked for a set of sculptures for the Victoria Square in Birmingham, uh, the second largest city in UK. Uh, and the, strange enough, I was lucky to work on a city square where uh, the city square was, uh, not, was empty or hadn't had much of interest and they wanted to turn the whole thing with the European EC funding, they wanted to turn the whole thing into a, a large European, Europe-like piazza where, you know, there would be a large, water, there was a large, uh, there is a large water, water feature or fountain and uh, sculptures around it and all. So uh, it was very challenging for uh, my ideas uh, to be put into practice. And, uh, and I had, I had a, the opportunity to, uh, to work with uh, classical materials like uh, uh, fine sandstone and um, bronze. Uh, uh, so there were two large guardians, and then uh, something I call the river, which was in the main fountain, and then the uh, lower fountain where the cascading water came down uh, to the uh, uh, 
uh, <coughs> uh, uh, what do you say, came, came down to the, uh, I mean, there is also a large, uh, slope from um, the council house to the uh, 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 lower pool fountain where uh, there, are, there are two figures that are called the youth uh, and then there is a small fountain. Uh, and then I also made lamp standards of uh, solid stone. Uh, and uh, seeing all those pieces work together or anybody who, who goes there at any time um, and finds it, um, um, say, engaging and interesting enough not to get bored by it. And so it's like, if I get bored by what I do, it is obviously going to bore others who don't know much about it. So my interest in sculpture is all about that how will it work without uh, sunlight? How will it work in the sunlight? How will it work, say, in the light of anybody's mind, you know, or how will it lit up, you know, in the eyes of anybody or mind and heart? You know? Let's see how it works. But I have to keep trying to understand what I'm doing and keep, keep working, yes. Sir, I had a small follow-up to that. So since, uh, you know, we are considering how you have been making the things on the art, be it the river or the other sculptures that you have made. So if I talk about the tools that are required to make those, then uh, do you think, you know, that someone needs to have great adequate tools to be able to make art, otherwise it's not possible? Or, you know, how can one even strive to continue if they can't afford the supplies? Can't afford? Uh, sir, what I wanted to say was, uh, <clears throat> like considering the different sculptures that you've made, if let's say someone uh, would like to make, you know, different artworks, but they don't have the required tools, do you think right. that they would fail or is it necessary to have a certain basic requirement? And how can one continue to strive and continue even if they can't afford the supplies? Uh, with uh, with uh, the simplest and the cheapest uh, uh, available media medium would be clay and plaster, for instance. And what you can do with clay and plaster can I'm, can I'm sure be good enough for others to understand. For those who understand what is what, uh, for them to understand that uh, uh, you can also work with uh, better materials and. Uh, 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 when uh, the work turns into a project, obviously there are uh, more than uh, several agencies involved, you know, in terms of uh, designers, architects, uh, uh, masons, uh, then joiners, uh, uh, and uh, I don't know, people, uh, transport people, electric people uh, who actually do um, you know, see things in terms of you know where the lighting will work and how it will work and uh, in, in this case uh, here the the fountain actually had all the people who uh, working uh, uh, with white water the idea of white water and you know cascading water and you know the, the way um, everything should work in terms of uh, pumping pumping the water back into the fountain every uh, all the time and all um, so it becomes a sort of big operation and it can work like that. But then uh, uh, to, uh, what, what one can do is, uh, uh, is one thing and what, uh, what others actually trust and trust you with is another thing. So uh, there is a sort of first thing is uh, work and quality. And the second thing is uh, it's also a matter of luck in, uh, to an extent where users happen to be... Uh, lucky to be there at right time with right people with you know uh, and right things happening with you and your work you know, you know. Uh, so in terms of tools i don't really think uh, tools are so important because uh, 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 tools, tools can tools are only extension of people's uh, 
needs, you know. So uh, for uh, the best artists, you know, are, are able to modify or make their own tools for what they want to do with, uh, work with, you know. So uh, that's that. Uh, and uh, 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 for certain kind of work, you know, there are experts who actually can do the uh, carving and uh, 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 do a professional job. Sometimes uh, uh, it is helpful to meet the uh, dead, deadlines uh, of time, you know, with, uh, with the work. So it's important. Absolutely, sir. So thank you so much for enlightening us and our audience on this. I'm glad that you told this because, you know, I had this confusion about tools and how, you know, people extend it and extend their uh, creativity and knowledge to build something. Thank you so much. I think Ipshita has a question she can continue with. Yes. Yes. Uh, so while you were mentioning about your experience and all the projects you have worked on, I couldn't help but think how skilled you are and how much effort you must have put on each and every project. But there were times where you made mistakes. So as a sculptor, what do mistakes mean to you? Are they just a part of your learning process or it's a new form of, you know, it's an art in itself? Mistakes are inevitable part of learning, uh, whether they are real or willful. Uh, they actually expand consciousness and self-awareness. Uh, uh, anyone uh, with an agile eye and mind can over overcome mistakes or or uh, uh, see them as temporal setbacks only. Uh, and uh, genuine mistakes offer uh, real uh, lessons, you know. Uh, if, uh, and I think anyone who is involved with one's work, for them, um, uh, it's easy to deal with uh, shortfalls that cause problems and um, uh, remedy, remedy things and correct themselves and expect better results, you know. Right, sir. Right. So, um, sir, even if I would have made a mistake, I would have thought of it as a learning experience. But your idea of mistakes, like, was uh, really great to know about it. I'll obviously consider it in my own, uh, you know, studies and whatever I pursue in my career. The part of you know making a mistake and learning from it. So, sir, uh, that being said. I had a question, like you were self-taught from your high school and, uh, you know, about self-taught art artists, do you feel that they are more creative and, you know, open and crude with their artwork and how can self-taught artists be motivated to work harder since they don't come from, you know, some standardized uh, processing process or some standardized institute. So it's more like what's coming out of their imagination. So how do you think are, uh, you know, self-taught artists motivated or how do you think are they more creative with their artwork well in terms of self self taught artist you know it's like uh, uh, the desire to to learn is is part of teaching oneself and uh, as far as uh, teaching is concerned when uh, regardless uh, say a kind of curriculum followed by someone, uh, followed by the artist or the person concerned, uh, it is always uh, a kind of method in one's mind and heart that I think I should approach something this way or that way and, and, and you know, uh, find invariable ways of getting to their objective, of, of realizing their goals. Uh, so whether it be uh, making a, a three-dimensional object or a drawing, or uh, use of paint, or use of particular material, or use of a particular technique, and use of uh, tools, uh, particular tools for specific results. You know, so uh, that's uh, that's part part and parcel of uh, 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 learning. You know, it's, uh, so it's like uh, uh, 
uh, one can't just uh, say it is self uh, teaching oneself because uh, 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 because uh, uh, if one does not improve it becomes a part and parcel of being naive you know so so naive art uh, and using one's naivete actually to cultivate uh, and, and to cultivate that in order to uh, say exploit others inabilities uh, or shortcomings uh, for one's advantage uh, that's different but it's not the kind of things that interest me at all uh, uh, it's like if others don't know it doesn't mean that i i should actually not do uh, something which is right regardless their uh, interest in things or not you know otherwise it's be like a a, a doctor or or a physician uh, should truly sort of treat the person you know uh, or the ailment of person uh, regardless uh, their liking for uh, something bitter or sweet you know yeah yes sir uh so definitely i think i'm sure all of us who create art or are interested in creativity had some sort of um, dilemma when it comes to being self taught they always uh, had that apprehension that they're not better than those who have been taught art formally but i think uh, your pers- your answer and your perspective will help our audience be motivated and pursue what they love uh so uh being from an engineering college and you being the sculptor that you are great at your work i couldn't uh i have to ask this question you know in india as you mentioned before that art is usually pursued as a hobby rather than a career and uh, you have a career out of it and you have an illustrious career uh what will be your tips for the budding artists who want to follow your path and what problem should they be aware of and how Hmm. one should uh, uh, i i i think that if, if one is really interested in genuinely interested in art they should uh, concentrate on the ideas of learning as opposed to delivering and impressing people if you want to do if you do things to impress people you may may deceive yourself uh if you really want to learn something then you can do something uh uh which is good for you and 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 you also need a kind of distancing uh and an objectivity to try uh and retain your sanity instead of uh, exploring and exploit exploiting others uh, inaptitude or ignorance you know and uh, 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 anyone interested in doing things uh, they can't uh, uh, succeed until they reach to the point where uh, where the outcome will decide whether they they have succeeded or failed so it's like uh, in in a way uh, a kind of disappointment or failure would also lead you to succeed again purely because you know exactly where you are and where where you must move to uh, as a next step and uh, in one way or other i think uh, uh, genuine desire to learn can always succeed purely out of uh, because because the people who actually there are people who there are people who are uh, perceptive enough and also uh, generous enough to actually accept and support uh anything which 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 is genuine they are they are not in great number but you don't need many people you only need few friends you know you might have thousands of acquaintances you might have millions of followers but they are they are not good for you you only need few friends and and few people are good enough for you just the way a, a conscience a singular conscience of a person is more important than uh, than everybody telling you what you should be doing uh, what do you think yes sir absolutely uh, sir 
I just wish I would have been as uh, wise as you are, but I wish our audience and uh, you know I, I'm sure our audience and I, both of us and Ipshita, all of us are learning from your wisdom here. So I believe that our audience and all the birding artists who are watching the stream today would be motivated and inspired by your talk and your life and how you have you know build build your life with uh, sculpture and art and how you have you know been recognized. By the Royal Academy of Arts in London and been awarded by the Queen. I just wish that all our audience members consider your wisdom while they build their career choices, and I'm sure that they will be able to, you know, at least try and build something good for themselves considering your uh, advice. So, so thank you so much for the talk. We are glad that you know uh, you came and you gave us you know thirty forty minutes of your. valuable time so with this we come to the end of an enthralling session with sir and sir helped us understand the nuances of the world of sculptures a lot better than i or ipshita knew before this so we hope with this uh, mr dhruva mistri was able to ignite the spark of creativity that lays dormant amidst the mundane existence and i hope all our viewers and all the budding artists and sculptors who are watching this must have got in a great deal of advice for their career ahead thank you so much everyone for being with us and you know watching this live stream i am really glad sir was here thank you so much sir we are really privileged to have you with us today and with this i would like to conclude the stream today thank you so much and thank you for joining start of 2022 we conclude the last start talk for this edition and looking forward to host everyone in the next edition of start talk by the retreat circle in night the topic Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much, sir. Wishing, wish you all the best. Yes, uh, uh, for your own studies as well as uh, your careers that you uh, are aiming uh, aiming for in your life. And I'm sure that you will engineer something as 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 genuine, genial, and as as great as uh, one can imagine and expect from people like you. Thank, Thank you. you so yes. much, sir. So we'll try our best. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, is the Thank live you. stream uh, switched off? Could someone from the OC platform? Uh, can the OC please confirm if the live stream has stopped or not?